What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com back with another SketchUp navigation tutorial for you. So I got an email yesterday from a user that's having a little bit of trouble navigating around the model um, and kind of predicting the way that the different tools are gonna work and things like that. So I wanted to make a video just kind of talking through the way that you can use some of the navigation tools in SketchUp in order to move around quickly inside of your models. Um, so one thing that I have done is I've put together a guide of 10 time-saving tips for modeling in SketchUp that can save you a ton of time that you should definitely check out. They're things that are really gonna help you take your modeling game to the next level. So make sure you check those out at the sketchupessentials.com slash tips. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. Okay, so first off, uh, we're gonna use a 3D warehouse model. Um, this particular one is the Parquet Deportivo El Centenario um, from Julio CGS. And so if you want to download this and follow along, you can find this on the 3D warehouse. But I wanted to use this model because it's got a combination of exterior and interior spaces. And it's just kind of a good example of how we might navigate around inside of our SketchUp model. And so the number one tip that I always give people when they're working on trying to make a, or have a better navigation experience inside of SketchUp is to use a three button mouse with the scroll wheel. So I know a lot of you already know this, but one of the simplest things you can do in SketchUp to have a better time in navigating around is to use that mouse with the scroll wheel. And the biggest deal and the biggest reason for that is because you can um, basically click that mouse, that center mouse button down in order to orbit and you can also zoom in and out using that scroll wheel. So you can scroll up to zoom in, scroll back to zoom out and you can click and hold that orbit button down so you can move around really quickly doing that. So that's number one is you should be using a three button mouse with a scroll wheel. Um, little note, people ask me about a 3D mouse. Um, you can definitely use those but I think it's probably more important for you to have that three button mouse with the scroll wheel than anything else. Um, so that's tip number one. Tip number two is knowing that the zoom tool, whenever you zoom in using a scroll wheel, is always gonna follow your cursor. So like for example, um, if I zoom in, like let's say I wanted to zoom in in the center point of the soccer field, and I put my mouse up in this corner, you're gonna notice that this is gonna kind of fly off into space over here. So it doesn't um, zoom in based on the center of your screen, it zooms in based on where your mouse cursor is located. So in this situation, if I wanted to zoom in on this center point here, I would wanna make sure that I put my mouse over the point that I wanna zoom into before I scroll forward. And so you can use that to scroll in and to zoom in on whatever you want to inside of your model. And one other thing I want to note about that is not only does the cursor location matter when you're zooming in, so it's going to zoom in based on where your cursor is, it's also going to zoom out based on where that cursor is. So like for example, if I put my cursor in the upper left hand corner of the screen and I zoom, you can see how this is zooming out based on that cursor location. Um, and this is going to act completely different if I put my cursor in the lower right hand corner of my screen. And you can see how that is zooming out out from the point where my mouse cursor is based on that corner now. So just know that when you want to zoom in, put your mouse over what you want to zoom in on. And uh, also if you want to zoom out from a point, uh, mess around with moving your mouse around um, in different locations when you scroll outward. So tip three is one that I have only recently started using, but it's very useful, especially if you want to center your uh, view on a point. So you can actually double click the center mouse button to center your view on a point. So like for example, I could center my mouse view on this edge right here just by double clicking that center mouse button. So the center mouse button, which is mapped to your orbit key, if you double click on it, um, just using that button will center based on that point. So if you wanna center your view on something, double clicking that center mouse button will do that. So tip four is really important, and that is to pan by holding the shift key. So what that means is, if you remember, there's a few different ways to move around inside of SketchUp. There's the orbit, which is gonna orbit your view around. There's zoom, which is zooming in and out, but there's also pan. And so if you remember, there's a tool over here for panning, it's gonna move your view left, right, up, or down. Well, you can also activate pan inside of your model by holding down your center mouse button 
So that's going to be your orbit option, but then holding down the shift key on your keyboard. So right now I have my center mouse button held down, and I also have the shift key held down. And what that's doing is that's allowing me to drag my view around inside of this model. And so what happens is when you start putting these things together, this allows you to really quickly navigate around your model and get the views that you want. So like for example, if I wanted a, like a, a front view of this little building right here, you can see how I can get there really quickly by orbiting and then holding the shift key in order to move this to where I want it inside of my scene, and then letting up on the shift key and going back to the orbit tool. So when you start combining these things um, in your navigation, you're going to be able to fly around your models very quickly. So make sure that you practice panning by holding the orbit button and holding the shift key. So another tip that I think is a really good tip is sometimes if you're like inside your model like this, you get inside of a wall and you get like lost, right? And so you'll get like inside this wall and all of a sudden you don't really know where to go and your zoom, zoom key is not really working very well and you've lost your model and uh, it's kind of a pain, right? It's kind of frustrating. Well, um, what I do when I get in a situation like this is sometimes I just start over by clicking on this button right here. So this button is called Zoom Extents. It's it's in your large tool set, it's also in your tool set at the top of the screen, but basically what that's going to do is that's going to zoom your whole model out so that everything inside of your model fits inside of your viewport. So what that does is it basically resets that view so that everything fits in that viewport. Well all of a sudden you're not lost anymore because you've zoomed out and you can see exactly where you are. So if you ever get lost, don't waste a ton of time trying to fix your view and figure out your view and all that stuff. Just click on the zoom extents and then just start again. So just fly back in and you're good to go. So tip six, another tool that I really like is sometimes you want to take something like let's say this track and you want to center it in your screen and you want to make sure that you've picked up all of it in your view. Well, there's this really great tool in the large tool set called Zoom Window. And uh, by the way, if you don't have the large tool set, you can just uh, right click up in your toolbars area, at least on a PC, and you can just check the box for large tool set in order to turn that on. So, um, but this tool right here, Zoom Window, what it does is it actually allows you to drag a box around something in order to zoom in on it. So you can see how I can quickly get a view that picks up at least most of this uh, this track really quickly. So you can use that if you want more, if you don't want to necessarily if you're less worried about being centered on something and more worried about getting something to fit inside of your view, using this tool will basically create a view um, that encompasses whatever you drag inside of the, whatever you uh, put inside of this box. So this is another great tool for kind of precision zooming and moving around. So if I wanted to center on one of these things, for example, I could just drag a box right there. I do have to zoom out a little bit, but you can see how I'm able to really quickly focus on something using that tool. All right, so tip seven, um, sometimes, especially when you're dealing, so your model is going to act differently with an interior than it is in an exterior. So like, for example, in this model, we've got this whole interior space over here, and it's really kind of hard to get into. Like, you kind of have to zoom in and then out, and you see how you start running into walls. I mean, you can pan and things like that, but you can see how this isn't necessarily the quickest way to get into this area because you have to do a whole bunch of like custom zooming work and that kind of thing and it can get kind of frustrating and so what I recommend for getting into an area like that is using the first person camera tools and specifically there's a tool in here called position camera and so what position camera does is that allows you to actually select the tool and then click on a point in order to center your camera on that point so I can use that to really quickly place my camera like right here or something like that. And you can see how it automatically, once you place your point, moves you into look around mode, which we're gonna talk about more in a second. But it allows you to really quickly navigate around interiors in here. One thing I do not recommend on interiors is using the orbit tool because what using the orbit tool does in the interior, and SketchUp's orbit tool is actually better than a lot of other programs orbit tools, but you can still start running into walls and other things like that and you start having real problems in here so I would recommend using a tool like position camera instead 
One benefit of using position camera is you can set a point and then you can click and drag your mouse in order to set what your camera is going to look at when you set that point. So you can see how when I clicked and drag this, I can set this so that my camera is looking in a certain direction. So I click and drag so that I'm gonna set my camera based on this point and it's gonna set my camera up looking in the direction that I dragged. So that position camera tool is really helpful. Tip eight, we already talked about a little bit, but when you're in the interior of a building, I don't recommend um, using the zoom and the orbit functions to move around quite as much um, because they just, they're kind of built for big movements. And um, when you try to navigate through different things, you can start going through walls and stuff and it's just not very precise. So instead, what I recommend for an interior is setting your camera and then using the look around tool to adjust the way that your camera looks. So instead of using the orbit tool, I recommend using um, position camera to set this, but then using look around to pivot your camera around a point. So, and pan usually works pretty well on the interior, but um, you can see how if I set my camera on this point, you don't want to orbit around because you've already got it where you want it. You want to use this look around tool to keep your camera location fixed and just rotate the direction that your camera is facing. So on the interiors, I recommend doing this this way. And you can use this a little bit. You just have to be really careful when you're doing it. Um, so the precision work is really best left as much as possible to these interior camera tools. So tip nine is changing the field of view of your camera so you can see more. So like for example, let's say that I was to set my camera We'll go ahead and set it maybe here, looking at this building um, or this little space right here. So a lot of the time what'll happen with your camera is you'll start feeling kind of cramped on these interior spaces. So like for example, you wanna see more of this space and this actually is a pretty big space so it's not as problematic, but you just can't see as much with your camera because the field of view or the area that this view is picking up is kind of low. Well, you can adjust your field of view in an interior area by clicking on the zoom tool and then holding the shift key and clicking and dragging. So you can see how when I click and drag, what this does is this is gonna adjust the field of view of my camera so that it picks up more. And usually what's kind of problematic is your camera is often set at like 35 degrees. You can see that in the lower right hand corner when you activate the zoom tool. Well, 35 degrees doesn't really pick up a whole lot with your camera. It just kind of leaves you feeling kind of cramped and things like that. And there's a whole bunch of like camera theory and other things about that, creating different views inside of a building. Uh, and I don't want to get too far into that right now, but I do want to say that when you're working with an interior, you can click on this and you can either hold the shift key and click and drag up and down, or you can type in a value like 55 and hit the enter key with that zoom tool active. And you can use that to adjust your field of view so you can see more with your camera. So that's something that's really good for using on interior spaces where you want to see more stuff is to adjust that field of view. And then the last thing I want to talk about that can be a huge time saver is saving your views with scenes. So like for example, I've navigated inside of this building and let's say that I this is a view that I'm going to come back to for whatever reason. Like it's a plaza or something like that and it's something I'm going to show. Well, if you have a view that you're going to come back to, don't always navigate back to it because you're going to waste a ton of time positioning your camera. Instead, if you go up to view animation and you click on add scene, what that's going to do is that's going to add a tab right here that's going to save that camera view. What that means is now if I was to do something like go to my zoom extents or something like that and I wanted to go back to that scene, I can just click on this and this will just automatically take that back to my scene. And in SketchUp 2019, they added the ability to right click on this and rename this up here, which is great because now we could call this Plaza. I don't even know if this is a Plaza, but you could save that view right here. I could set up another view over here. And we could go to view, animation, add scene. I could call the second one pool. We could set up a third one, move that up a little bit, 
And you can also right click on these and click the button for add to add a scene, but you could name this one field. Well now, no matter where I go in my model, if I decide that I wanna to go to my pool, I can just click on the button for pool and it'll take me to that view that I saved. If I wanna to go to my plaza, I can just click on plaza. If I wanna to go to my field, I can just click on my field. So you can use this to save these different views so that you don't have to waste a lot of time going back to them. And one thing I wanna note about that is if you set up a view like this one and you decide that you want it to be facing this direction or something like that, you can just adjust this and then right click on your your scene and click the button for update. Well now the camera view for that scene has been updated for that new view. So you can update these once you've created them in order to do fine adjustments and things like that, but it can save you a ton of time in not re-navigating to the same spaces over and over again. Um, leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Was this stuff helpful to you? Um, did you know about all of this? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.